Hey brothers and sisters, it's Jared. If this video opens your eyes or blesses you in any way, I would ask you to please share it. Right here below the video is the share link, and when you click on that, you can share it on Google Plus or Facebook. Even if you feel that no one will hear or watch the video, we must spread these messages in this last hour. Thank you guys for all of your support and help. Conan O'Brien. history of the devil in rock and roll it goes all the way back to like Elvis was uh, was everyone said he's playing the devil's music uh, and uh, what was that great song the devil went down to Joe oh Charlie Daniels Charlie Daniels, Charlie Daniels he, he had some devil in there and, and it goes even back to it, before that who's Robert Johnson right and uh, you, you can find his roots you know way back to the beginning of rock and, and so you know had, had we sold our soul to the devil uh, how else can you explain us being here on a right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, we are it. I got introduced to the music industry. I swear I wanted to be like the Amy Grant of music. Yeah. <laughs> but it didn't work out, and so I sold my soul to the devil. I sold my soul to the devil. I know it's a crappy deal. Music came with a few toys like a happy meal. When you lose this vision of the soon return of the Lord Jesus Christ, you will absolutely grow cold and indifferent you will not feed on jesus anymore you will not 
feel any motivation to read the Word of God. You will sit in God's house, but your mind will be filled and satiated with all the other stuff you've been feeding on. Because only those who expect the coming of the Lord are feeding on Christ. Some of you sitting here now, you've been in this church quite a number of years. You've heard message after message. What are you eating and drinking? Are you as much in love with Jesus this morning while I'm talking to you as you were a year ago? Are you as hungry for the Word of God? Or have you put Jesus on the back side of your mind? He's back here somewhere and you say, Oh yeah, I believe Him, I trust Him, but you know, I've got all these things to do. I've got things in my life. And little by little, you eat and drink the other things of this world. And you are not focused now on Jesus. And the only reason you would do that is because you really don't believe Jesus is coming soon. If you really believe Jesus is coming and you believe what He said, Be ye ready! You would not get spiritually lazy. You say, well, as long as I'm morally clean, it's not enough to be morally clean. All of our moral cleanness, if it is not associated with absolute watchfulness, if it does not motivate us to the, the, to the love of His return, it can become absolute rags. You see, when you're not eating and feasting on Christ, you don't expect His return. You turn to the world. You turn to its filth. He shall begin to eat and drink with the drunken. Now, he's not going to bars and nightclubs. That's not what he's talking about. You see, that little box in your living room? Now, folks, I'm not on a soapbox. But let me tell you where we're headed. And I want you to listen to me. Because I, I don't have anything to prove. But I answer for your soul. And let me tell you where we're headed. You see, you can turn your living room into the bar room. In other words, when it says eating and drinking with the drunken. It means that you're eating the same food, drinking the same food that's intoxicated the world. They are intoxicated now with an entertainment. And you can bring those videos into your house and get so involved in eating and drinking. And folks, I'm going to tell you, this begins to satiate the mind. It begins to affect your thinking. Nudity, filth, adultery, fornication. And I'm going to look you right in the eye and tell you that if you're sitting there when Jesus comes and you're watching that film, how do you expect to come out of that cesspool suddenly into the arms of Jesus? Come on now. How do you sit there and watch those talk shows that are nothing but slop from the very pits? Absolute filth. And you're going to feed on that? You're going to drink that drink? You're going to eat that food with the drunken and get intoxicated with this? And you come to the house of God and you still think what's going to happen to Mary because she's in her third husband and, and you're going to sit here, all these things going through your mind and you go, praise the Lord! Folks, what we're, we're going to see soon, very soon, here's what the Holy Spirit was speaking to me last night. It is going to be so beyond anything you and I see today. Folks, what's happening right now? This is the day if you've been sitting there drinking smut, lay it down! Folks, this is not a game. It's your eternal soul. And folks, this is coming. It is speeding down upon us. And I'm telling you, if you are drinking and eating at the wrong table, if you start eating and drinking with the drunken, you will not make it. I say it again, you will not make it. I think of my grandchildren. I think of your children. And I say, Lord, how do my grandchildren stand against this moral invasion, this, this moral landslide that's coming, that's accelerating so fast? Oh, folks, we have, we have people now watching stuff that 10 years ago would have made them vomit. They would have literally gone out of the living room and vomited. And now they sit there drinking it in, wanting more. Where will we be down the road as it accelerates according to Leviticus seven times, seven times, seven times? And what do we do with our children? And I pray so many times, oh God, what do my grandchildren do? How are they going to stand? How are all the children in Times Square Church? How are our Christian children, our children, our grandchildren, how are they going to stand? Because Jesus says, the Bible says clearly evil men are going to wax worse and worse deceiving and being deceived. And you and I cannot sit here now. If we had the full vision, we would all be on our feet weeping or on our knees and on our face if we knew what's coming. And we have a whole generation of young people now from Christian families and they're going to face this flood. How are they going to make it? Now let me tell you what the Holy Spirit told me. Hallelujah. First of all, you must have in your home a renewed vision of the soon return of Jesus Christ. There has to be a cry in you so that your children hear it. Even so, Lord Jesus, come quickly. That's the cry of the Holy Ghost. 
And this has to be uppermost in your mind. If you don't have this truth burning and alive, a flame in your heart, saying, Oh, Jesus, I want to be prepared. Oh, God, by your Holy Spirit, enable me. Give me power to live for you. Not the fear of going to hell. It's the fear of failing a loving Savior who loves you and died for you. Christians who truly believe that he's coming, they will watch, they will pray, they will yearn for him. And I'm going to tell you, you really don't believe the Lord is coming at any time if you're living a lazy, apathetic Christian life right now. You really don't believe He's coming. And secondly, no matter how vile and wicked society becomes, anyone can and will stand if they eat the right food and drink the right drink. Listen to me, please. Your children, you say, Pastor, how are my children going to make it? First of all, you're going to teach them about the coming of the Lord. I believe you should do this every single day. And we'll be preaching it more and more from this pulpit. Jesus is coming, and He's coming soon. Hallelujah. And I want to be watching. I want to be waiting. I want to be ready. Hallelujah. And that means I want to be eating the Word of God. I want to be feasting on Jesus. I want to be drinking, being satisfied. I want all my thirst satisfied in Him. And folks, when it's all said and done, all that is in this life, thank God for family, thank God for friends, thank God for His blessings. But there's, this is not the real world. This is not the real world. We're going somewhere for eternity. This is just a little piece of eternity cut out called time and space to repent. A little time and space to, to, to prepare our hearts for the glory of God that awaits us. I'm not living for today. Why would I trade this for a few moments of pleasure? That's why Moses said he'd rather suffer the children of God than to enjoy the place of this earth, but for a little season. I'm not trading that for anything in the world. Hallelujah. But if you're eating and drinking this filth, then you really don't believe that he's coming. Now unto him was able to keep you from falling and present you faultless before his throne with exceeding great joy. I want to be there before him and say, Jesus, it's not on my goodness it's not on my merits it was your blood I've trusted in the justification sanctification of the Holy Ghost through the blood of Jesus Christ but Lord you kept me you fed me the Word of God was my life hallelujah you convicted me of my sin I listened to the ministry of the Word the Word of God was a knife that cut and I I, I yielded to the surgeon's knife Jesus and now I stand before you with exceeding great joy. Hallelujah. If you would like to hear any more sermons like this, go over to End Time Sermons. You can click this picture right here, which is another sermon by Brother David Wilkerson, or there's a link in the description below. And also, once again, if you were blessed by this video, please share it so that others may be blessed by it as well. And let us spread the truth of Christ in this last hour. God bless you guys, and be well with you.